This achievement is often regarded as a remarkable demonstration of technological innovation, and rightfully so, as it has never been attempted before. However, when viewed through a broader lens, this method holds profound implications for the future of humanity. Flight 5 represents the first pivotal step toward realizing that future. But why is the capture of Starship Super Heavy with the Mechazilla arm so critical? Let's explore this in today's episode of Great SpaceX. With the latest updates, SpaceX catch the Super Heavy booster with the Mechazilla arm, a moment posed to be truly extraordinary. In the past, rockets were largely expendable, with the boosters landing in the ocean and upper stages burning up in orbit. Reusable spacecraft would re-enter and land using parachutes, often in the ocean or on land. The space shuttle, with its runway landing capability, was perhaps the most unique approach to reusability. Then came SpaceX, revolutionizing spaceflight. In December of 2015, they became the first organization to successfully land a booster, achieving what many thought belonged only in science fiction, vertical landing. Just a few months later, in April of 2016, SpaceX made history again by landing a booster on a drone ship. Since then, SpaceX has continued to set itself apart with groundbreaking feats. Now they are to push the boundaries once more by catching a rocket with a robotic arm. The risks and challenges are substantial. Controlling a booster as it navigates, lands, and is caught and stabilized by another system requires exceptional precision. Yet, it'll be a moment even more remarkable than their achievements with the Falcon rockets. SpaceX aims to catch both stages of the rocket during Flight 6 or Flight 7, marking the first full recovery and potentially reuse of an entire rocket. This would represent the pinnacle of aerospace technology and a major leap forward in space exploration. Let's move beyond the typical view and look at the true significance of this mission. We all know that Elon Musk and SpaceX have developed ambitious plans for Starship, the most notable being the colonization of Mars. Musk envisions sending one million people and a million tons of supplies to Mars in order to establish a self-sustaining city. However, the optimal window to launch missions to Mars occurs every 26 months, making timing crucial. During each of these windows, Starship will need to launch frequently. Musk has described a scenario where SpaceX launches 10 Starships per day, each carrying over 200 tons of cargo. This would result in 1.5 million tons delivered into orbit per launch window, with about 250,000 tons being transported to Mars. Given this schedule, it'll take at least a decade to deliver 1 million tons to Mars. The timeline is pressing. Musk has set a goal to land the first Starship on Mars within the next two years and to send humans within four. Once this is achieved, SpaceX plans to begin constructing a Martian city within 20 years, a rapid pace for such a monumental task. But for any of this to happen, SpaceX must first achieve the capability to launch Starships at a rate of 10 flights per day. This will require faster production, quicker regulatory approvals, and crucially, reusability. SpaceX also has plans for Starship beyond Mars, such as the Earth to Earth project, where Starship would function like a commercial airliner. Though this project faces fewer technical challenges than Mars colonization, it will still require a high launch frequency comparable to today's aviation industry. This brings us to the significance of SpaceX's decision to catch rockets with the Mechazilla arm. Why did they choose this method over the previous ones? While Falcon 9's landing method on drone ships, for example, offers flexibility and reduces risk by optimizing fuel and avoiding landing complications, it has a key disadvantage. The time it takes to return the rocket to land and refurbish it, slowing down the reflight process. Catching the rocket on a tower, on the other hand, allows for immediate refurbishment at the launch site. If the rocket remains in good condition, it can be relaunched almost immediately. Musk has set ambitious goals, reflying Starship daily and Super Heavy every hour. The Mechazilla arm is crucial to achieving this, though multiple launch towers will be necessary to support such high-frequency launches. The first step in this journey is Flight 5. First, the last two flights have demonstrated the stability of reaching orbit, and the landing process has improved significantly. On Flight 4, for the first time, both stages were successfully landed. 
According to Bill Gerstenmeier, the previous landing was accurate within half a centimeter, suggesting that catching the booster is a reasonable next step. Second, SpaceX has been extensively preparing for this moment. The rocket itself has undergone hardware and software upgrades. The engines on the Super Heavy booster have likely been thoroughly tested, given their critical role in navigation and deceleration. Meanwhile, the Mechazilla arm has undergone months of upgrades and rigorous testing, including stress tests, operational checks, and more. Successfully catching Super Heavy will prove SpaceX's technological prowess and pave the way for full reusability, an essential goal. Full reusability not only supports frequent launches to meet SpaceX's ambitious goals, but it also reduces costs significantly. Reducing launch costs will make missions to the Moon and Mars more affordable and open up access to Starship for more people, including for the Earth to Earth project. That's why the catching method and the first attempt on Flight 5 are so critical. Applying nice catch in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's journey. SpaceX's innovative method of catching the Super Heavy booster using the Mechazilla arm is set to be a game changer for rocket reusability, but it has faced considerable delays due to regulatory challenges. Flight 5, which aims to demonstrate this technology, has been slowed primarily by the FAA and other environmental agencies, which have raised safety concerns despite SpaceX's strong safety record. The focus of these agencies seems to be on potential risks rather than on the innovation itself, creating a significant barrier for SpaceX as it seeks to advance its technology. This regulatory friction is occurring at a crucial time for the U.S. space industry, particularly as China is accelerating its own space program. China has already sent rovers to the moon, collected samples, and aims to send astronauts to the lunar surface by the end of this decade. Within the next five years, they plan to establish a lunar base with operations targeted for 2035. While China's timeline is slightly behind that of the U.S., the gap could close quickly if American companies like SpaceX continue to face delays from bureaucratic red tape. Gwynne Shotwell, SpaceX's COO, has highlighted that this problem is largely specific to the U.S., where innovation is being hampered by an outdated regulatory system, while China continues to press forward rapidly. The FAA's stance that Flight 5 should closely mirror the mission profile of the previous flight reflects a cautious approach. But this insistence on repeating the past could stifle the very innovation that SpaceX and the U.S. space program need to stay ahead. Flight 5 represents an opportunity to demonstrate true advances in rocket reusability with the goal of recovering the Super Heavy booster mid-air. This is not just a technical leap for SpaceX, but also a critical step toward achieving fully reusable spacecraft, a key element for future missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. It could prove that the FAA's concerns are overblown and highlight the inefficiencies in their current regulatory system. A successful mission would be a strong rebuttal to the agencies that have delayed progress and could serve as a catalyst for broader regulatory reforms. SpaceX's achievement would send a clear message that safety and innovation are not mutually exclusive and that progress can be made without compromising essential safety standards. In the bigger picture, this success could drive the U.S. space industry forward, helping it maintain its competitive edge on the global stage. Without reform, there is a real risk that the U.S. could lose its lead in space exploration to nations like China who face fewer bureaucratic barriers. The success of Flight 5 could be a turning point, prompting changes that would allow faster innovation while still adhering to safety and environmental standards. Such a shift is critical if the U.S. wants to retain its position as the global leader in space exploration. In the long term, regulatory reform is essential for ensuring that the U.S. remains at the forefront of space exploration. Innovation in space technology, like the reusability that SpaceX is pioneering, is key to future missions and ambitions, including colonization of the Moon and Mars. Without a more agile and supportive regulatory framework, the U.S. risks falling behind. SpaceX's ability to demonstrate the viability of its technology in Flight 5 could pave the way for a more progressive, innovation-friendly approach, securing America's leadership in the next frontier of space exploration. This moment has the potential to become a symbol of 21st century space innovation, something once thought impossible. More importantly, it'll pave the way for a future where rockets are fully reusable, launch more frequently, and at significantly lower costs.
It could also mark a turning point where regulatory barriers no longer hinder progress, allowing space exploration and settlement to become accessible to all. And how remarkable would it be to proudly say that the first step toward the future began in the United States. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.